avian wellness is like growing champion roses. Once you've got the steps, it's easy. Hi, my name is Leslie Moran. Some people say I wrote the book on sprouting, and you know what? I did. And one of the reasons why I wrote this book is because when birds joined my family 12 years ago, I began discovering the importance that sprouts can contribute to their health and wellness. And in my work as an avian wellness consultant, I utilize sprouts as a foundation for the nutritional plans, and we are just getting some amazing results. Towards the end of this video, we'll show you some of the things that we're seeing with health improvements with birds of all species. With sprouting being such an important part of my nutritional plan for parrots and all birds, let's talk a few minutes about sprouting. Now the most important thing that you can do is to learn how to sprout for the conditions that exist in your kitchen and in your area of the country. When I was doing the research for writing my book, I interviewed breeders in different parts of the country and the conditions vary slightly but enough to make a difference between success and failure. And I want you to be successful. That's why I wrote my book. That's why I created the Sprouting Blends. Because I want you to be able to achieve the same success with your birds that I do with the birds under my care and at my clients. Now let me go over some of the key areas as far as sprouting. Now when I sprout, I use glass jars. I love recycling. It's pretty easy to recycle jars in the kitchen. Peanut butter jars, pasta jars, oh, and my favorite, flower vase. You can get this at any thrift store for about a dollar. Then I use nylon net to cover the top held on with a rubber band. Now the most, the, ne the next important area as far as you being able to sprout successfully, because remember your sprouting blend has got to be able to grow for two to three days for it to reach optimum nutrition. Now there is a lot of misinformation out about, out about that and we'll clear that up in an upcoming video. So one of the key reasons why I created my sprouting blends is so that they have a compatible germination rate, that it will be also grow for two to three days and it is also completely organic. This is, those are some of the key ingredients that you want to look for, some of the key features you want to look for in a sprouting blend. Now first of all when you put some sprouting blend in here and ideally when you start out I suggest you use about a tablespoon per, per bird per day. Oh and just so you know a one pound bag will make about nine and a half cups of sprouts, so that will really last a long time. Firstly, after you put the sprouting blend in, you want to rinse it off to get any dust that are on the ingredients off. Some of the grains and the ingredients do have dust, so we want to rinse it out until the water runs clear. clean the grains off. The next thing that you want to do is add GSE. Now GSE is an all-natural antibacterial antifungal product and it's called it's grapefruit seed extract short GSE. Because birds are sensitive to bacterial and fungal infections I suggest using this. My book gives all the details and for a jar this size you want to use about six drops. So I put the GSE in and when I soak, you want to use slightly warm water and fill it up. And what works for me in northern Nevada is that I let my sprouts soak for about 12 hours. Now remember though, this is going to vary depending upon what part of the country you live in and your climate. So I let it soak overnight. Usually I'll get it started at bedtime and so in the morning when I get up, I've got sprouts going. And then next, after it's soaked for the initial period, then I rinse everything off. I'm going to get all the GSE off of it. And also, there'll be a little bit of coloration in the water. And so you just want to keep rinsing it until it rinses, the rinse water comes out clear. After you're satisfied that it's clear enough, then you want to set it at a 45 degree angle and you want to put it near an indirect light source 
My kitchen happens to have a north facing window. It's ideal for sprouting. So you want to just let it sit there and you're going to need to rinse it periodically depending upon what part of the country you live in. For me, rinsing it in the morning and rinsing it in the evening, that works just great. Then it grows for two to three days and then I'm ready to start feeding it. Now chapter four of the book explains how to take care of it once you've got the sprouts. Chapter five talks about a, variety of about a variety of different ways of how to introduce sprouts to a variety of different birds and be successful with it. Now for those of you that are new to sprouting, everything that you need to succeed is in my complete sprouting kit. Copy of the book, a one pound bag of the sprouting blend, and a bottle of GSE. And just so you know, this bottle of GSE, and I sprout daily for my birds all year round. This lasts me over a year, so it's, it's really quite economical. After two to three days of growing and rinsing, this is what our original sprouting blend looks like when it's ready to feed your birds. Now, when feeding sprouts, you need to ensure that they stay in good condition. You can do this by using the sniff test, and that's just what it sounds like. You sniff your sprouts and make sure they smell fresh. Any sour or spoiled smell is easy to recognize. If they smell off, you want to toss them and start over. My book covers this in more detail. This is a pair of crimson winged parrots enjoying our sprouting blends. Here are some examples of the meals I feed my own birds. In these dishes, the complete protein sprouting blend makes up about 50% of the foods offered. The remaining 50% is a combination of fresh fruit, vegetables, and select nuts. In creating health and wellness for birds, I use my sprouting blends as the foundational food in the diet for healing feather destruction. This is a green cheek conure before and after recovering. And here he is enjoying the original sprouting blend. Healing feather destruction is such an important topic. We'll cover it in more detail in future videos. This is an Amboina king parrot. One healing result that we've seen in this species and in the white-eyed conure is the reversal of avian cataracts. The milky color in the eye is the cataract. Now, your bird may not have cataracts, but any food that can produce this type of healing result can also have beneficial effects on many different conditions in the body. Well, I hope some of the information in this video has given you some things to think about. If you'd like more information on the work that I'm doing with birds, you can visit my website, www.bestbirdfoodever.com. I have blogs on diet and nutrition, behavior and wellness. Also, if you're interested in following my train of thought as far as topics that I research and write about on a regular basis, you might be interested in looking at Parrots Magazine. I have a regular column there called The Holistic Parrot. Look forward to helping you have happy, healthier birds.